What's going on guys, welcome to the Hey tutorial of the series special effects for games. And today this tutorial is brought to you by a patron who supports me in my patron page and requested to do a tutorial about projectile effects. I thought it was a good idea and that's why we are having this lesson. But in the next video we will continue with the cartoon effects episodes. And as you can see I have this scene where we can see a guy being hit by the projectiles I have made. But basically the projectile is not moving. And then I have a script that makes the projectile move and if he hits the enemy it will spawn an explosion effect and then destroy the particle system. That's pretty simple. But we are only going to focus on creating the projectile effect and uh, let's see how we can do this. So let's create an empty game object and rename it to particle system projectile. Let's create a new particle system before going on to our image editing software. And the first effect I made was made in Photoshop. As you can see, I made two spells, two images. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. So we can create a new Photoshop file with 1000 by 1000, paint the background to black and create a new layer. Now, I basically use one of the brushes that I, I mostly use, which I think is pretty good. and. You know, we can make pretty much anything with this. Now, the idea is that you start figuring out how your effect is going to be. And I make a rough sketch with my brush set to an opacity of around 50. And then I try to figure out what I like and figure out what I want. For instance, if we wanted to make a bullet, it would be pretty simple. We would need something like this, more or less like this. And I always paint uh, with white. I like to give color in Unity, but that's fine if you paint in Photoshop. Okay, so that was just a few tips. I'm going to do something crazy, something different. It's probably going to be a fireball. And you can also use transform tools to manipulate your effect. I always start with something big, then I start to create some details. And after you have done your image for the effect, for the particle system, you can crop it with C and add the black background and export as a PNG to Unity. And now in Unity we need to create a folder. I'm gonna rename it to projectile and I'm going to import the image we have created. Okay, so now we need to create a material for this image. I'm going to give it the same name and we need to change the shader to particles additive. Now we can drop the image to the slot of the material and drop the material to the particle system, like this. Now we can start by turning off shape. And this is way too small, so we can increase it and we are going to use 3D start size, which will allow us to stretch the image to our own taste. I'm gonna make the X a little bit random between maybe 9 and 11. And this has too many image, I'm gonna decrease it to 1 in rate over time from the emission, or even less, so it can work better. In my case, if I play with the Y axis, I can figure out the original shape of the image. And I'm gonna leave the Z as it is. Okay, so now that we have the shape of our image right and the size, we can turn on rotation over lifetime. And as you can see, this is rotating the X axis and we don't want that. So the trick is to turn on separate axis. The idea now is that we make it rotate in the X axis in my case. And if we increase the rate over time, this is the effect we get. We get the projectile spinning around and we can do a lot of stuff with this. Now let's decrease the opacity because there are too many images at the moment. Let's go to renderer because if we get closer, your image will shrink and we are going to increase the max particle size to avoid that problem. We also need to set the billboard alignment to local. This way the projectile will be facing its own axis and not always the camera or the view. Ok, so if we decrease now the start lifetime, you can see that the image start disappearing faster and you may need to increase the rate over time and the opacity which means that you have to find the balance between the start lifetime, the opacity and the rate over time. Okay, so after you have found that balance between the start lifetime, the opacity and the rate over time, we can work on the color. And for the start color, I'm gonna use random between two colors. 
and I'm gonna make random between a darker blue and a lighter blue. Of course, this is up to you, the color. And you can also use the color of a lifetime. I mean, you should use the color of a lifetime because it will allow us to smooth the beginning and the end of each particle. This is pretty easy to work with. The keys on top control the opacity and you can add one with mouse click one and the keys on bottom controls the color. Ok, so after you have found the colors for your particle system, for the image, we can create another particle system which is going to be called particles. And you may need to rotate it so the emission is aligned with the particle system. Something like this, as you can see. And by the way, you can change the pivot of your particle system if you go to render. This may be useful for you. And for the particle system, I also created a very simple image. As you can see, something like this circle, something like a beam of light. And the way I created it was very simple. I started drawing big circles to small circles. And then I gave a simple effect, some simple details, and that's it. We have made a beam of light. You can do one if you want. And uh, I'm gonna use the same material that I already had for the last particle system, which is beam 1, and I'm gonna drag on top the particles. Now, we may need to adjust the shape, and we are going to use a cone. I'm using a very small angle, like this, and I'm gonna increase the rate over time to 30. Now I change the start of a lifetime, so it's rendered between 0 0.5 and 3. And we also want to make the start speed random. I'm gonna make something like between 4 and 7. Maybe it's too much, you know. You have to play with these values to see what fit best for you. And I also decrease the start size between very small particles, which is 0 0.01 and 0 0.7. And now we can add a little bit of randomness by turning on velocity over lifetime and using random between two constants. And we can set a minimum and a maximum for each axis. I'm gonna set 1 and minus 1, which I think is enough to give just some small aleatory movement to the particles. And after you have done that, you can turn on color over lifetime to smooth the beginning and the ending. And you can also give it some color. You can also use the size over lifetime and I'm gonna use a curve similar to this one. You can add points to the curve with the right click mouse and select add key. This will make the beginning of each particle smaller and it will reach the maximum size and towards the end the particle will get smaller. Ok, so now to give a nice, really nice effect, we can go to trails, turn it on and as you can see it creates these trails and the ratio controls how many particles will have trails and I'm gonna say that I want half of the particles to have trails. I also want to make the start lifetime random between 0 0.5 and 1 and decrease a little bit the color over lifetime, like this. Now we can turn on noise and if you want you can decrease the frequency so they don't get much curvy and decrease the strength, that's up to you. You can play with these values, see what you like the idea is that the noise gives that curves effect to the trails and it's awesome. I'm going to duplicate these particles and uh, basically I'm gonna make a, a very small cone like this. I'm gonna push it a little bit behind and I'm gonna decrease the emission. I just want a few particles and turn off velocity over lifetime because I want these particles to go straight which means that I also need to turn off noise which I already did and now in this case I want all the particles to have trails so I set the ratio to 1 and now if I increase the opacity of these colors it will get this bright blue which is awesome by the way and if you want you can also give colors in Photoshop like this but basically you will have to set the color to white like that and it's also good, it's also looking good and now we are pretty much done with this. We can create a light if you want, a point light, and create a prefab from the light. And now if you go to particle system and turn on lights, by the way, this feature is only available in, in Unity 5.5, and drag the prefab to that input. And we can set the ratio to 1, and we can control the maximum lights down here, I'm gonna set to 5, 
I'm gonna also set the range multiplier and the intensity multiplier random between 0.8 and 1.2. You can also play with these values. And we are done with the particle system. I'm gonna actually set the color of these last particle sims to look like a fireball, like I said in the beginning. Basically, as you can see, those are great spells. They look like spells, look like a fireball, the one looks like a magical spell, I don't know. It looks fantastic in my opinion. And I hope you guys have also enjoyed this as much as I did. Feel free to ask any questions, guys. I will get to you as soon as possible. And if you want, you can support me on my Patreon page. You can have access to these effects and much more. Go check it out. You can also request a tutorial if you want. The pledge is just a little bit higher. And that's it guys, subscribe for more weekly game development tutorials and see you in the next video.